reason why I said it's bizarre is you have to start looking at it from the aspect of how they see things. They see things not as living, but they see, they see everything as things and, and, and commodities on moving titles of property. So when they see, uh, say, someone standing before them, they don't see a man, they only see a thing. And as such is what comes to that, that public forum or that venue or, or arena of law is slave owners. And unfortunately, this is the way that system is set up. It's set up that everyone has only equitable title of use as basically slaves, and the lords, nobles, or esquires, uh, aka bar associations, come in uh, from the side of being slave masters with holders of real property. So, it's like this. If you get uh, the date of birth of your loved one, along with yourself, and get a membership number from, uh, from one heaven, you now activate a trust, and then you can come in and lawfully convey uh, your loved one under the consented uh, right that you are basically the uh, property owner, a.k.a. slave master, uh, and you're coming to collect your property. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, did, are you saying to also enroll the loved one in the as a membership too, or just myself? And well, then I can. I I I don't think it would hurt to enroll and then come from the aspect of of uh, you know here's here's his res, here's his registered trust and uh, of which I am the uh, the holder uh, and, and basically is your you're coming to collect your property. Okay. Uh I again is uh what I would suggest is uh, is try to get involved through uh the university and in the forums and ask questions. And, and again is uh is you would possibly get some some good answers uh by those who've done uh okay. something like that. Uh, Terry, I believe was was it Regan's group or someone like that that had some kind of success getting some loved one out of court? Uh, there have been there have been a couple of instances there that have been used on a warrant or orders uh, very successfully. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, again, it is anything is possible. I mean, this is the the new model I've adopted because really, truly, anything is possible once you start, you know, really uh, seeing the uh, the power of uh, of uh, of the steps and in, in getting the competence. So uh, I, again, as I I urge is is please drop by the university site, which is university info. And uh, in the forums, we can discuss uh, those those types of procedures. Great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Rob Ryder just uh, has been in the queue and has another question. Go ahead, Rob. Mm -hmm. um, it goes along Hello. with that last – hi. It goes along with that last statement. Um, uh -huh. early, early on, uh, before Eucadia Talk Shoe started, uh, Frank had been on like Divine Water or Divine Mind, one of those two. Uh -huh. And there, there was a gentleman on that had an 18-year-old son who was in jail. Yeah, I heard about and, that. Yeah. Okay, well, and then the next week the boy was out of jail, and they, you know, they were talking about in the background, but they never went into details. Well, I called Frank and, and uh, talked to him about that, and uh, this was when I very first got started with this, so I didn't know Frank from Adam as far as that goes. And we had a very nice conversation, but I said, well, Frank, how long did it take for the boy to get out of jail? And he said 15 minutes. And they threw him out of the jail in his, not through, but, you know, physically took him out of the jail outside of the door in his shorts and a bag of clothes. And all he had to sign for was his clothes. And this is all very, very important to understand because... Um, 
the clothes were the clothes. It was like the emperor has no clothes. His dad went in with a deep pole or something. I'm not really sure because they never talked about exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. All I know is in 15 minutes, the boy was out of jail, standing on the sidewalk in his shorts and a bag of clothes. Yeah. And uh, and the only paperwork he had to sign to get out of jail was to sign for the clothes. Now, this doesn't happen, right? I've been in jail once myself, and you you don't get out in 15 minutes. You know, it, it's it's a prolonged procedure to get out of jail. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, they, can I? Yeah, go, go ahead, Rob. Did you have a question? No, I just wondered if anybody ever that? heard any more about that story or where that gentleman was because I'd like to know how he got his son out of jail. What what did he do with the deed poll? Well, I haven't spoken to the gentleman, so uh, yeah. I, I again, as I've, I, I can't answer that that comment. But it's just something to ask Frank. You know, I was I meant to ask Frank yeah. tonight if he was on the call, but you know, I mean, run it by him because there's an answer there, a very powerful answer to anybody who will listen. That you don't get out of jail in 15 minutes. It doesn't happen. You know. <laughs> Well, he, uh, I, I do have a little bit more information about that, and it would be better to actually speak with the, those folks that were directly involved in that, it. Uh, yeah. They were uh, um, trying several things. The, the boy was in jail for a total of uh, 15 days. Um, yes. That particular time was a court hearing um, on that, that on that particular day. Now, okay. he, he wasn't checked out with a bag of clothes because when they picked him up, he had nothing on but his boxer shorts because they they raided uh, the home where he was actually caring for his grandmother, and they kidnapped him based on oh. a uh, warrant that they had that they were not aware of. So... Um, so anyway, there's a lot there's a lot more to that story, but uh, in any case, they they did have to go through a lot of the, uh, of different things and seeking uh, remedy and speaking with Frank and several uh, folks to try to get that okay. people process done and some other other uh, paperwork. So uh, with that, it is a good idea that that occurred over on uh, Kentucky. So. Um, um, Rob, I'll just uh, type in my email contact if you'd like to contact me directly, and I can see what I can do if you yeah. just had a direct uh, question to them. Uh, um, if, if he would uh, share the story, it'd be great to hear. If, if nothing else, you know, it should be um, something that, if it worked for some reason, it's worth finding out exactly what they did. Right. Right. Okay. Well, great. Thanks. Thanks, Beautiful. Rob. I'll uh, get okay. you my Thank email. You. Okay. Yes, Rob. Bye. Um, okay, now we do have another question. Um, let's see, I just unmuted Bashan or Bashan. Yeah. Can you hear yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, on Washington, and uh, uh, I just wanted to relate a court experience I had. Uh, I went to court the 9th of December, and uh, I didn't have all the information at first, so what I did with the... Ecclesiastical deed poll. I read it outside the bar, and uh, the judge said, "Well, I'm not. I've been in court a number of times, and yeah, and it gets tired of me. But, you know, I said I'm just going to find this to be committed. And I just told him, I said, well, I didn't say I wouldn't come in. I wanted to read the state, and they wouldn't accept it until I went in and I handed the prosecutor and." Actually, the judge got one also. And I probably screwed up more than once here, but I went ahead with this stuff, didn't know what to do. But uh, to make a longer story short, uh, at the end of the hearing, the prosecutor asked me over and he told me, he said, you don't have to bring all these to court. He said, you can come talk to me about it. And... uh, so today, I went up for a friend of mine's hearing, and I saw the prosecutor in the hallway who was talking to him about this. And he said, well, I told you I would help you. I said, well, what about the uh, deed poll that I gave you? He said, well, I can't deal with that. He 
said, you have no place to go with it. And I just made the statement, uh, well, what about, uh, uh, excuse me, the state court administrator? And he looked at me and he said, well, and he walked away. And I was just curious. Uh, I'm new at this also, and I'm just curious about this. Uh, I heard the other call about the public side, private side, and I've done quite a bit of reading on this. My viewpoint, I don't believe there is a public side. It's all private, like uh, Brian was talking about. So I was just uh, passing this on and see if there's any advice. Yeah, um, that, that's that's very interesting because, again, is um, one of the great tricks is uh, th- that we hear is, I'll be your friend. I'll do you a favor. I'll, uh, I'll make sure this gets in. And, oh, no, that can't work. Well, you see, we have to now call a spade a spade. The, the time is over for pussyfooting around, so to speak. Uh, we know now that courts are essentially enforcement bankers. We know the origins of the middle, inner, and outer temples, the four ends of courts that these cartel criminal organizations called bar associations operate. So immediately you have a dishonor. You have a, a, a lawful remedy and process that has been stopped. Uh, you can't always, in the face of great adversary uh, under fire, uh, completely win. But what you can do is you can use knowledge in competence against them. I'll, I'll, and I'll just, I'll, I'll kind of answer your question with, uh, with actually a story. Uh, with another gentleman that contacted me last month who had a problem, uh, he contacted me at 20 minutes to 11 in the morning, told me that he was going uh, to court uh, for, uh, for uh, I think it was 12.45 or 1 o'clock or something. Anyway, um, he asked me basically like, like yourself is what he should do in, in these, because he's been turned down. So uh, it's one of these issues where uh, I asked him, have you read Positive Law? And he said, yes. I said, how long have you been reading it? He said, about two days. I said, do you understand what property is and what estate is? He said, yes. I said, well, you understand that you are a tenant, right? Now, I want to make this, this point uh, uh, clear because this is, this is quite wild. You're a tenant on everything. You're a tenant on being arrested. You're a tenant on being processed. You're a tenant on being prosecuted and sent to jail. You're all a tenant. And as such is the landlord has to produce and provide a proper benefit privilege now again, is there's that whole thing about benefit and privilege and waiving uh, waiving benefit privilege and wa- uh, through uh, non consent. But another thing is this: uh, this gentleman who walked in the court, it was actually for uh, dr- I think the charge form was it was in traffic court. And it was for driving uh, I think without insurance. Anyway, it was a hefty fine, and uh, what he did was he walked in. And he said, uh, Your Honor, as a tenant in this matter, now this is driving, don't forget, as a tenant in this matter with only right of use of property, I ask for a stay as I have not exhausted all my administrative options to bring my rent in arrears up and I asked for install payment plan. When the court did, they went from threatening him at the start to right away was uh, complying, giving him a six month stay and if he can't pay in installments by then another six months. Now, most people out there listening to this call would think, wait a second here, that's not winning. 